the Bagua. Mm. And the center um, piece, which is health. And um, if you remember yes. when you were looking at the Bagua, every time that I presented a Bagua, that was always the center piece. And that's the only one that really touches all the other eight guas, okay? So remember, the Bagua is uh, the tool that we use, one, one of the tools that we use in feng shui um, to identify the areas of your home and any adjustments that need to be made. Um, and to think that there's only one that touches all of the other guas um, is very interesting. And that that particular one that touches all the others is health. So that um, in and of itself will tell you the importance of health in your life, all right? Without health, you have nothing really, um, as we have seen in this pandemic, okay? So um, if you are in ill health, that means that you are not balanced, okay? You need to balance your life with all the areas of life, which are the nine areas of the Bagua in order to have good health, all right? If you believe that you have done everything and that you still don't have good health, you have to look inside of yourself, all right? Um, really do some deep introspection as to what it is that you are doing in your life that is affecting your health. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Um, so with that said, um, also, one, one thing, um, since this is the last um, workshop of the nine Bagua uh, presentations, I want to reiterate, I want to really um, repeat uh, what feng shui is all about. I want you to understand that feng shui is what we would call a philosophy, okay? And that it has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with um, a cult following. It was developed over a period of 5,000 years in China, all right? And the reason that it developed was that people in China would observe nature and the cycles of nature. And as their behavior affected them because they weren't paying attention to nature, they began to pay attention more to nature and try to live in harmony with nature. As they started doing that, they discovered the laws of the universe, you know, the laws of the planet. Um, that has nothing to do with religion. It has to do with just the universe being what it is and how it functions, all right? So over 5,000 years, they observed the laws of nature, they observed nature, determined the laws of nature and developed a way of living in peace and harmony with joy if you follow the laws of nature. And like I said, that has nothing to do with religion. As you can see um, in some of the presentations, the feng shui allows for you to you know, um, have faith and to follow your faith. Uh, feng shui will support you to become a better human being that is living in harmony and peace, okay? So with that said, I'd like to start my presentation. Um, let me here. Um, Um, where do I share screen? I don't see. It. Okay, now. All right.
Okay, as you know, this is the Zoom Feng Shui workshop and it's sponsored by the West Orange Public Library. I'm going to ask you now to mute yourselves so that I can do the presentation without anybody listening to other comments that you may be making and utilize the comments and quest for questions at the end of the presentation, I will have a Q&A period and that's where you can ask any questions that you might have. And all I ask is to please be considerate of the time constraints of the workshop, okay? And a brief review, I've already um, discussed that with you, how we can use the Barbwa tool to identify areas in the home, areas that need adjustment and what you can put in those areas. And you can use the Bagua tool to analyze anything, your home, apartment, office, desk, um, any area and any geographical map. All right. And here is the pyramid feng shui Bagua. It is just an updated Bagua. It is exactly um, as the traditional. It's just that it's more comprehensive and encompassing um, more areas in each of the Baguas. Um, and is very descriptive. So today we're going with this center, Gua, the health. This is the entire Bagua, but each of these areas is called the Gua, right? So today is physical, mental, spiritual wholeness, okay? As you can see, this is the original shape of the Bagua when you look into feng shui and a lot of uh, um, illustrations of the Bagua, you will see it in this shape. And I haven't added all the other areas that it encompasses in terms of um, the subcategories that are included in each of the areas. So I've just given you a basic look to keep it simple, okay? And like I said, it's the same as the traditional Bagua. It's just more precise, integrated, up-to-date for today's lifestyle. All right. So um, in this health gua, we're going to pay attention to physical health, mental health, spiritual health, well-being health, and wholeness. All of the above are part of your comprehensive health. And we're going to see what the difference is in each of these. Um, the, like I said before, the, this condition of health in all these areas can be achieved only when all the other eight areas of your um, life are balanced. Can you see the, uh, this presentation? Okay. All right. So here are the important aspects of um, the physical health, all right? So if the mental image of your body doesn't reflect what you see in the mirror, this is where you begin to think about your physical health, all right? Do you say, I want to improve my physical appearance? Are you thinking, I want to be more flexible? Um, I want to improve my strength. I want to increase my endurance. I want to run a marathon. I want to be able to um, eat healthier. I want to understand what, why I am having health problems, all right? This is the area that you address those issues and you decide exactly what you need to change in your life in order to make this happen, okay? Um, so optimal health, like I said, depends on many, many things. All right. So your body's biological systems, your hair, your nails, your eyes, your ears, um, everything. Today we have specialists that address each of those areas. You know, if you have 
um, a primary doctor that you go to, um, that doctor will do the initial um, diagnostics. And then all of a sudden you get farmed out to specialists, you know, oh, there's something wrong with your eyes, you have to see an ophthalmologist. Oh, there's something wrong with your ears, you know, um, nose, you have to see an ENT. Oh, you know, there's something wrong with your foot, you have to see a podiatrist. Um, so on and on and on it goes. And you, it's just a series of uh, procedures that you have to follow in this country, right? Um, and that's Western medicine. Eastern medicine is quite different because they use one system and they analyze the flow of energy in your body. And by that, I mean the meridians, you know, your um, arteries, your veins, et cetera, uh, how it flows. And wherever you, there seems to be an issue, then they try to figure out what is stopping that flow of energy, what is stopping the flow of that blood into that area. Um, so it's a quite different approach. And in Western medicine, they treat the symptoms. In Eastern medicine, they look for the cause and they treat the cause. So in recent years, what has been happening is that Eastern medicine and Western medicine has been meeting. And they're trying to figure out in the Western world how to do both, as well as in China. How in China, they're trying to figure out how they can incorporate Western medicine into Eastern practices. So we are now beginning to see some of the benefits of putting those two together, all right? So that's for your physical health. I'm sorry. Then we have your mental health, your focus. Okay. Oh, let me, let me go back. I, I just want to, for you to see here, we have a very healthy meal and here we have people exercising. Okay. Somehow most people enjoy exercise if it's a social event. So it's better with friends. It's better with family. Here you can see a family exercising together, making it look fun as if it's not an exercise. Over here, you see people walking uh, with friends and enjoying that, all right? And down here, you see what happens in China. Health is a social event, all right? Everyone gets together and they do exercises together to reduce their stress. So you can see people in the park doing it. I'm sure that here in the United States, you can see people doing yoga and, and a lot of other outdoor activities to reduce their stress and to be calm, all right? So here we have the thinker. In order for you to develop good physical health, you have to think about it. It has to be an introspection. It has to be a decision that you make, okay? and feng shui can only support that for you. All right, so mental health, okay? Um, mental health is very, very important and really hasn't been given the attention that it should be given. It's only in the recent years with a lot of the um, difficult, difficult uh, uh, situations that have occurred in schools with shootings, et cetera, that people are now, um, uh, pointing to mental health um, in this country. Um, and I understand that some cultures uh, do not believe in going to a psychiatrist or to a psychologist because they believe that if you need to do that, you're a weak person. Um, let us get away from that, okay? Because you can't do everything yourself. And just like when I tell you that you are in your room or in your home and you don't see the clutter because you have gotten used to the clutter, mental health is the same. You are living with your thoughts, you are living with things that bother you 
and sometimes we don't even realize it. Most of the people that are stressed uh, don't even realize that they are stressed and they just go through their day doing things and don't realize the effect that that stress is having on them until it's too late. So when you think of mental health, do you think of, I want to be free from thoughts that interfere with my mental harmony? Do you sit sometimes and try to do something but can't because there is something that is bothering you, another thought, and you're thinking about something else, some problem, some issue that has occurred, and you just can't shake it, you can't get it out of your mind. So are you a worrier? And why can't you let things go, all right? I'm sure that everyone has experienced that. And why do I keep having mental conversations about things that bother me? That's a funny one, all right? Mental conversations. You are struggling with yourself. Um, my husband says, oh, you know, um, the, uh, the, the bill on, on the right tells me this and the bill on the left tells me this. And I am thinking, am I going to um, pay attention to the good bill or to the naughty bill, <laughs> all right? So that's his way of saying that he's having a mental conversation about something that is bothering him, all right? And I'm sure that everyone has had that experience. Um, there are people that have obsessive compulsive behavior and don't even realize it. You know, have you ever come across a person that um, says, oh, I'm a germaphobe, you know, and is constantly washing their hands or cleaning um, around you? Um, I once knew someone that if you visited her and you had a cup of coffee or a snack, um, as you um, uh, brought your snack to your mouth, if, if a morsel fell down on the table, she would go and immediately clean it as you were eating, all right? So she was really obsessed with being uh, clean, having a clean house and, and germs, okay? So that's the kind of thing that you have to look at what is causing that and, and why can't you relax, all right? Um, am I a passive aggressive person? You have people that yes you to death and tell you yes and then go and do the opposite, all right? Um, so, you wonder what is going on with this person, okay? Or maybe it's you, okay? And you can't get to talk to someone and tell them exactly what you're thinking and how you're feeling. Um, and you become angry and you become aggressive with the person, but, but in your actions, not in the way that you speak to them, all right? So a passive aggressive is a, a behavior uh, 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 that you see in the workplace also, okay? Um, a lot of people uh, practice this without even understanding that they're doing it and without even knowing that they're doing it. Um, it has just become part of their behavior because they're so frustrated and they don't know how to get their frustrations out into the open and try to rectify what is going on with them. I want to heal, but where do I start? Okay, so these are questions that you have, that you may have a whole lot more questions, and these are all under mental health. Okay, so here you have a person that is compulsive about cleaning, as you can see. Here, this is another one that is so prevalent these days. You see these three people here walking and looking at their phones? That's what's called FOMO, fear of missing out. They can't stay away from the phone because they are afraid that they're going to miss something. Now, you have to ask yourself, do I want to live someone else's life or do I want to live my life? And that's what you have to ask yourself when you are obsessed with going on Facebook, going on Instagram, going on Twitter, going on all these media sites and your phone that, that sometimes, you know, I've, I've said to some people, wow, that phone seems like it's an extension of your hand. It's always there. 
always looking. You can't even sit down to dinner without having your phone next to you, okay? Fear of missing out. That's part of your mental health. And let me tell you that they are having a lot of problems with this particular issue in other countries. And there's a whole area of psychology that is dealing with it now, okay? So here you have a person that is obsessed with eating, all right? And just eating, eating, eating. That is another issue. That is a mental issue. Here you have the brain with all these different things that are affecting you. How do you sort that out? How do you sort what's in your brain? Again, you need someone to help you sort that. Um, there's a saying, a physician heal thyself, right? Well, that doesn't work. You can't really diagnose your own self. If you're having issues, you have someone, you have to depend on somebody else who's a professional, help you figure out why you are doing these things. Okay. So spiritual health. All right. Um, so spiritual health not only has to do with your uh, faith and your beliefs, but how do you deal with life, okay? Is there a mechanism that you use to help you deal with the tough times in your life, okay? Besides your faith, okay? If you have a religious belief, how do you employ it to balance your life? Okay. If you are if you are an agnostic, how do you deal with the crisis in your life? That's very important because everybody will experience a crisis in their life at some point in their life, and for some people, they will experience many. And do you contemplate on what is the purpose of your life? At some point, we have to question ourselves. Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? All right. Some people question, oh, why was I born into this family? All right. There's a reason for everything. And you don't have to go crazy trying to find out. You just have to be more introspective and be more open to figuring out without stressing yourself what connects you to a greater power, all right? That's spirituality, okay? You see here the universe, well, part of the universe, if, um, planets out in the universe, well, like I said in the very beginning, feng shui follows the laws of the universe, all right? We as human beings and all creatures follow the laws of the universe also. When we do, we are happy, we have peace in our life, we do not have stress, we can deal with life, and we have more joy. When we don't, that's when we create problems in our lives, okay? So here, spiritual health check, very, very important, okay? Very important. Over here, we see the inside of a Catholic church. Over here, we see the Wailing Wall. Over here, we see a mosque. Um, oh, and there are many other religions. So you can figure that people have been asking this question. What is the purpose of life? All right. Um, I want to believe in something bigger than myself. I want to believe in something that can give me some kind of guidance on how to live my life. All right. How to be at peace. So you have faith. All right. And whatever your religion is, you have adopted that. And that gives you principles and some kind of uh, guide to life and how you can live your life, all right? So 
The next part is our, well, here are two parts, well-being and wholeness, okay? What do we mean by that in feng shui? Well, let's see. After you have dealt with your physical, mental, and spiritual well-being, you know, there's a part of you that belongs to well-being and wholeness. How do you create pleasure in your life? How do you enjoy life? Okay. Is pleasure a part of your life? Some people go throughout their life never um, making it a priority to have fun in their life. Okay. So do you take pleasure in the comforts of life? In the comforts of life, you know, the uh, um, simple things in life, um, order in your house, um, you have fabrics that you love because they feel really good on your skin because it, they attract you. You have colors that you use in your environment, in your decoration, um, because that attracts you. And you have things that you have bought that have attracted you. Um, that, all of that gives you pleasure and that's a comfort of life, okay? Do you feel safe? That's part of your wholeness. If you do not feel safe, you cannot be happy, all right? Are you happy with what you have? Instead of always looking at the Joneses and wanting what the Joneses have, do you look at what you have and are you happy with what you have? If you can be happy with what you have, that's a great beginning, okay? But if you're always trying to acquire more because your neighbors have more or people that you know have more or other members of your family have more, you will never be happy, all right? No matter how much you accumulate. Okay. Do you enjoy smelling the roses? What do I mean by that? Do you enjoy being out in nature? Meaning, you know, do you stop your life at one point and just sit and observe, look out a window, look at the trees, look at the sky, um, go out and sit in the grass, lay down, and, and just enjoy being still for the moment and enjoying that moment, okay? Do you curl up with a soft warm throw on your sofa? Does that make you comfortable and happy, all right? Do you enjoy relaxing to music? Do you enjoy listening to music? And what type of music do you enjoy, okay? So, um, there are all sorts of things that go into well-being. Let's take a look here. Here I have some incense. So aromatherapy is part of feng shui, okay? And your senses, all five senses are included in this well-being and wholeness. The smells. Do you have incense that you love? Do you use it in your home? Do you have scented oils? Do you use body oils after you bathe um, that make your skin feel silky and makes you just feel wonderful, okay? And the scent of that relaxes you, like lavender. For people who um, can't relax, uh, lavender scent is incredibly great because it helps you to relax. And for those of you who have to focus um, and just can't focus, smelling a little bit of peppermint wakes you up and helps you focus, all right? So things like that. Scent is very, very important to us as humans, and scent is very important to the animal kingdom too. Here you see a woman in a fur throw on the sofa, all right? Do you use the beautiful things that you have been gifted or do you put them away to use them for a special occasion, all right? Um, I know someone who um, was gifted a beautiful set of thick towels, all right? And this was gifted to this person because one of the guests in the home determined that 
her time with her also as a gift, thank you gift. They gifted this person a beautiful set of towels. Well, this person put that beautiful set of towels in the closet, never used them, and passed away and never used them. So what is the point of having beautiful things if you don't use them, okay? Don't put them away for a special occasion. Take them out and enjoy them, okay? Here is a person really enjoying music by themselves. You don't need to sit with someone else to enjoy music. You can put earphones on and listen and just relax. Here is another person reading at the beach, which is one of the things that I love to do. I love to go to the beach and sit. I don't even have to go into the water, all right? Or I don't even have to get on the sand. I just have to sit on the boardwalk under an umbrella and read and just listen to the waves as I am reading. I love that. That relaxes me. Here is a field of lavender, okay? Part of nature, part of well-being. So wholeness and well-being is really, really important, okay? Um, also, another uh, category that goes into the health one is the unknown. And what do I mean by the unknown? By the unknown, I mean anything that you think you can't classify and are not sure where it fits in in your life. Okay? So that's where um, it goes. Remember that the health gua is in the middle of the bagua and it touches all the other guas, okay? So now um, I am going to stop sharing um, before I go on to the things that we can uh, put in that area. And if you unmute yourself, you can ask any questions that you may have before I go into that, okay? Any questions? Um, <clears throat> Millie, I have a question in terms of um, finding meditation time during the day. Yes. But would you consider maybe um, early in the morning to try to find some time before okay. getting up? Well, there for are health, for health reasons. Okay, I mean, for health mental reasons. health. Yes, um, there are many ways that you can do meditation. All right, you can get up early in the morning and just have uh, ten minutes to yourself before anybody else gets up uh, to meditate. You can do it during lunchtime. Find a place, or when you have a break, find a place that you can get away from everyone at the job and just sit and you can listen to some classical music and just close your eyes and be still, all right? Um, you can do a two minute meditation during that time. Um, you can also do it before you go to bed, okay? You take time to sit down after you've done everything and you're about to go to bed you can take time to write in a journal, okay? Um, take everything that you have in your mind that is bothering you during that day, put it down in the journal, get it out of your mind, and then sit just for five minutes and be still and meditate, okay? There are a lot of different methods to meditation, so you have to find the one that... Um, you like best, okay? So those are three times in the day that you can do it. Okay. Cool. Any other questions? No questions? Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the presentation and we're going to go over what things you should have um, in the Bagua or what things are recommended.
Okay. All right. So here we are. What can I place in my health gua to improve my health? This is an easy one. Okay. Just think of the things that bring you joy. If you can't think of anything, just think about that. The things that bring you joy. Now, with that said, I am going to tell you that the elements for this area are earth and fire. So anything that comes from the earth or that is made with earth materials and anything that represents fire are excellent to put in this area. All right. In addition to which, since it represents your spiritual health, anything that represents your faith, your belief. Okay. So let's see. Um, any, I said anything that comes from the earth, right? So why do I have this picture here? Because that's a stone floor. And stone, this particular flooring is made from earth materials. Baskets, these are all made from plants that grow in the earth. And the colors of this gua are the earth colors, the earth tones, yellow and gold. And um, just think of fall colors, okay? As you see with this basket, these are fall colors. So plants, okay, except trees, anything that is tall, small plants. Here you have, I put coexist. If you notice, it has all the icons of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different beliefs. All right. So anything that can represent your faith, your personal belief, you can put it there. You can put a menorah, you can put a cross, you can put um, uh, symbols of your faith, okay? I have a rose quartz there, and in, it is in the shape of a heart. Well, the center of your house is the heart of your family, okay? So just think about those things. Here I have candles. Okay, and you see that they are on a square. So the shape that you can have here is a square and flat. So that illustrates that particular um, square item. Again, things that make you go, ah, just think about that. Look at the fur, the pillow. It, it, when you look at it, you go, ah, it's just, it, it automatically relaxes you, you know. Uh, think about when you come into your home after a day's work or after shopping and, and you're out there and you come in and you're dying to get into your home and all of a sudden you open the door, you walk in and you go, ah, that's exactly what you should think about for this area, okay? Yellow flowers, color yellow flowers from the earth. Um, so think about that, fire, um, orange, red. So as I said before, think about the fall colors and only your imagination can limit what things you can put in here. Just remember the specific pertinent characteristics of this gua, okay? So first, as always, um, I, t I always tell you to remember to look at the space with feng shui eyes now. What does that mean? Look at it as if you've never seen it before. It is new to you and be very objective. Don't be subjective. Don't try to ignore that clutter that you have there. Clean that clutter, declutter and clean. That's the most important thing. Get rid of any broken 
or malfunctioning things in the area, all right? And then evaluate the space. What do I use the space for and what should I put in this space? And as you know, this health gua is in the middle of the bagua, so that is the middle of your home. And in any room, it is the middle of your room. So if in the middle of your living room, you have a cocktail table, that cocktail table should be a square if you're going to follow the laws of the universe and the Bagua, all right? So that's what's recommended, a square table. Um, and these are the things that you could put on the square table, okay? So um, the flooring, let's talk about the flooring. Any flooring that is made from natural materials such as tiles, um, wool, cotton, grass, rugs, all right, except wood, if at all possible. If you have wood in this area, a wood floor, then cover it with a rug that is made of natural fibers. Think things that come from the earth, okay? Remember also that I've always said good lighting. This area needs good lighting. And lamps that have a square shape um, are recommended. If you have overhead lighting, then make sure that it has a square cover, okay? Metal items um, like trays and candlesticks and boxes and tea set and metallic sculpture, um, that you can put on top of a wood table, a square wood table. Square items. Well, you know, you say, well, what, what about square items? Or what, what can I, what kind of square items can I put? Well, you can have square stone coasters to put down a cup, all right? Over here, you see rounds, but I recommend square. Um, square photo frame, all right? Fruits of the earth is what I recommend, all right? And what do I mean by that? Like I said before, real fruit in a natural material basket is great, but anything that comes from the earth, yellow flowers, rocks, crystals, anything natural that comes from the earth. Um, so, uh, you're saying, well, you know, what do you mean by um, earth tones? All right, I said, remember fall colors, the golds, the oranges, the yellows, the browns, etc. Things that just think fall, all right? And when you think about religious or spiritual items, all right, anything that calls to mind your beliefs, your connection to the universe, your connection to a greater power, things that make you feel good as you view them, as you touch them, as you smell them, such as any religious icon, uh, a blanket, incense, you know. Um, so those are religious spiritual things. Also, since this is the place where you should feel the most comfortable, funny things can go there too. You know, things that make you smile when you see them because they evoke a good memory or things that um, will help you have a good time like games, all right? Um, fire items. I said before that the elements of this area are earth and fire. So what are fire items? Candles, incense, burning aromatic oils, triangular items like the stone pyramid as a decorative item, all right? Also, I would recommend, highly recommend, a symbolic representation of the goals that you have accomplished, all right? Um, because this represents gratitude. So the center of your home should reflect all of that, things that make you feel good and that express your gratitude for what you have received, all right? Um, if, if you have a gathering place in the center of the health gua, 
that's a perfect place to meet, to talk, to play games. Um, and it's even luckier if the seating arrangement is in the form of an octagon. Um, if, if you have um, an octagon uh, seating area, an octagon table, that's another shape that you can use, all right? Meaning that if people are seated in sort of a round um, configuration where everybody can see themselves, that's the best type of seating arrangement so that everyone can have an, a feeling that they are equal in that social atmosphere and have equal time to communicate with each other, all right? So if there are things that you can place here or that are recommended for you to place there, there must also be things that you should avoid placing in this area. So the first thing, like I said before, clutter, dust, and dirt. Anything broken, cracked, or dented objects, they should not be there. Anything that is malfunctioning, they should not be there. Any furniture that is uncomfortable, that looks uncomfortable or delicate or is hard to use or sit on, that should not be there. Any fabrics that are um, hard on your skin, um, that are not soft, should not be there. A spiral staircase should not be there. Right? Anything green except for small plants shouldn't be there. Any items that are tall or tree-like, you know, like a pillar, a column, a pole, um, that shouldn't be there. Uh, so those are the things that I would highly recommend that you avoid in this area, okay? Um, and there, the sense that you can use in this area that I think will benefit everyone would be sort of like a sage, okay? It, sage is also used for clearing spaces. It's used in um, ceremonies uh, across the, the world in a lot of different cultures to uh, clear space. And it also invigorates you. And it helps you to be more introspective, which is really very important for this area, for you to take time to be introspective. Sage also helps to reduce stress, okay? Such as physical ex exhaustion, sadness, nervousness, and restlessness. So sage is a good um, scent to have as yes. one that is natural, okay? Um, and remember, all the other guas had an opposite gua. This one is the only one that doesn't have it because it is all encompassing. It includes all the other guas, okay? And when you try to um, work in this space to um, make it better, don't go out and buy stuff. Take a look at what you have around your home, okay? And I'm sure that you will find something that you will absolutely love to put there, that you absolutely enjoy, that reduces your stress, all right? So use what you have. Um, and when you place it, place it with an intention, all right? A wish. What is it that I want when I see this? What is it that I, the, the feeling that I want to evoke when I see this and sit in this area, okay? Um, if you live with others, feel free to share what you are doing with them or one of them. Ask them for their support in keeping you accountable to your goals in this area, right? Or have them join you in working this far for each of you. It's very important that when you live with others, you include them if you are going to change anything in the home, really, because 
changing anything in the home affects everybody. So it's a good thing to talk and to be on board with each other, okay? Before you do any of that. Um, now, one last thing. Um, if you are not getting the desired results in feng shui, there are many reasons why you may not be getting the desired results. Perhaps if you are doing it yourself, um, you may need the eye, and I highly recommend that, the eye of a professional feng shui uh, person, because that person will come in and look at the space with fresh eyes and will see and feel what you don't see, okay? So that's one reason. Another reason is if in fact all the areas are balanced and you still do not have the results, you have to look towards yourself, introspection. Did you really change what you needed to change in yourself to accomplish the goal that you needed to accomplish? All right. Feng Shui is not magic. Feng Shui helps you balance your environment so that you can be at peace and accomplish your goals. All right. So the other thing that I recommend is keep a journal because sometimes you may not see the very slight changes taking place, but if you keep a journal day to day to day, um, after a month, you go back and you read the beginning and then you read towards the end and you can see if there has been a change in your attitude, if there has been a change in the areas that you want it to change. So I highly recommend that, keeping a journal. Um, it can because you're trying to be vigilant of any changes. Um, and it happens naturally when you journal, you can see it because you record your feelings in a journal. And there are many types of journals, but this is what you should think about when you want to do your own feng shui, all right? Um, and like anything natural, it takes 90 days for natural medicine to kick in fully, all right? And 90 days is a completion, nine. The number nine is completion, and so is the number of health. The gua of health has the number nine. So it is a completion of everything. So um, give yourself 90 days um, for things to, remedies to kick in. Um, remember that the universe has its own time and it's not your time, but it's the time of the universe, all right? Um, and then I highly recommend that you refresh your guas every season. That would be every 90 days, all right? Look at it and think of something that you may want to change in there um, if you want. And Look at it uh, um, with very objective eyes so that you can determine what it is that you would like to change there, all right? So like I said, this particular gua is very important because it's all about you and your inner unseen um, existence because your outer self, people can see that. If people can't see what you have in your mind, in your heart, um, um, your spirit, etc. So only you know that. And that's why this is such an important gua for you to be aware of and to help you be introspective and change those things that you have wanted to change or perhaps People have told you that you should think about this, all right, and, and think about it because um, if you do take the time to be introspective, 
really honest with yourself. I'm sure that you will find something that you have wanted to change and have put it on the back burner, but it, it has always been there and you haven't dealt with it. So deal with it and you'll see how life will change. And like I said, feng shui is about helping you create balance in your life, find balance, create harmony and joy um, to bring balance to your life so that you can coexist with everyone else um, in peace and harmony. Okay. Any questions? Um, I, can you hear me, Millie? Yes, I can hear you. Um, I, um, I think to me overall, I think all the sections, all the sections that we did um, were all positive on my end in terms of trying to make some changes. I, 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 I truly believe in the last year, I've been trying to make changes to my environment. And I think I'm, I've taken a, a few baby steps uh, in, that, in that process. And I appreciate your efforts because um, they, they've been well discussed and talked and uh, I appreciate all your efforts. Thank you, thank you. Um, um, Millie? Yes. It's Amy. It's Amy. Um, I, I want to thank you so much for doing these, these workshops. We have, Liz and I have really enjoyed them and, and yes. learned, learned a lot. We and have, we're gonna miss them. We are oh, miss that, them. that's yes. so nice of you. Next, next week is going to feel somewhat barren. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I also have enjoyed your really? presentations and I've absorbed a lot of the information, you know, it's, I'm going to put it to use. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and like I said, um, feng shui is not a religion. It's just a philosophy that um, I don't, I, I don't want to say just, it's, a philosophy based on the laws of nature. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it can only help to balance your life. Okay. So I'm, I'm happy that everyone has enjoyed this series. Um, mm -hmm. There have been questions about uh, the elements. People want to know about the elements. Well, that in and of itself is uh, an, another tool that is used in feng shui and there are five elements and each of the five elements have a lot of information um, to learn and, and to understand and how they work in supporting each other and how they can also destroy each other if you don't have them appropriately uh, in, in your home in the way that you should um, because in nature, that is the cycle um, in nature. So what you're looking for is having that same cycle of the elements in your home. There's a creative and supportive cycle, and then there is a destructive cycle. So that's another area of feng shui totally um, that I couldn't include in here because it, it was just a lot to, uh, to do. Um, so those are five elements that can be another series if anybody is interested. Um, and then there's also, uh, you have to request, you have to also request, you know, make sure that you make your request of what you want to see. All right. And um, also someone had asked about 2021, um, what does function what, what does Feng Shui say about 2021? All right, that's another area also that uh, Feng Shui looks at the universe and how it is unfolding at the moment and tries to um, tell you exactly what that means. All right, so that's more in the realm of astrology. And there is the Western astrology, and then there's the Chinese astrology. So 
they're quite different. Um, and the feng shui includes the Chinese astrology, uh, which is very, very uh, um, interesting. Okay. Um, you don't have to believe in it, uh, but it's just interesting to see what is said. Um, I think that when you are exposed to other cultural beliefs, you begin to understand people better and get along better um, and with tolerance. And that's so much what we need in this world. You know, we, we should not be looking at just what we like or what um, we think everyone should do. Everyone is an individual and you choose how you want to live your life as long as it is not uh, uh, creating uh, problems for another person. You know, if you do um, follow feng shui, you will find peace and harmony and uh, much joy in your life. So, and, and that doesn't preclude your faith. I mean, you have to uh, understand that faith is part of feng shui. It doesn't tell you what faith you should believe in. That's up to you. All right. So it just makes you a better human being. And you can practice your faith and become a better human being while using feng shui. Okay. So good luck to everybody. In Thank you. I hope that everyone. Uh, um, stays healthy and safe. If you have any questions that you haven't thought of yet, you feel free to email me at milly, M I L L Y dot R S G at gmail dot com. All right. So um, I will try to answer your questions and uh, Thank you again for giving me this opportunity. You're very welcome. It's, uh, you too. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Millie, we will see you again. That oh, is yeah. a promise. We will see Thank you again. Yes, I. Yes, we will. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Lizzie.